Welcome to Helsingborg, Sweden, not to be confused with Helsingborg, Denmark, just minutes away across the strait. I'm an American journalist and I've been coming here for years and I'd love to show you around. Let's take a quick look at Helsingborg and then go explore all that this region has to offer. One of Sweden's oldest cities, Helsingborg was settled nearly 1,000 years ago. Though I love the history, it's the active lifestyle and accessibility that brought me here. From the beautiful North Harbor with its charming waterfront, to the Dunkers Cultural Center designed by famed architect Kim Utzon, to the 14th century St. Mary's Church, Helsingborg offers a lot in a small space. You can shop for international and brand names on Sweden's oldest shopping street, and that's just steps away from the North Harbor. At the end of the shopping street is Helsingborg's centuries-old medieval fortress, Shannon. Walk up to the top where the views are breathtaking. On clear days, you can see as far as Copenhagen, and you can always see beautiful Helsingborg down below. Just three miles north of Helsingborg is a palace with a special story. Welcome to Sophia Rowe. My host here is Annika Malgren. She's the manager of the palace and its beautiful gardens, and she's volunteered to show me around. Sophia Rowe was named Europe's most beautiful garden in 2010, thanks to the more than 500 varieties of rhododendrons and abundant roses and dahlia. Sophia Rowe also hosts garden festivals and outdoor summer concerts during the spring, summer, and fall. In 1864, Sweden's crown prince Oscar purchased land here to build a summer castle for his wife Sophie. Sophia Rowe looks across to Hamlet's castle in Denmark. So now we're in the King's former dining room, and this is an award-winning restaurant. In fact, it's won many awards. And we're about to enjoy some food produced with local ingredients from the Northwest Skåne region. So, bon appetit. This part of Sweden is known for its farms and rich culinary heritage. And having lunch at Sophia Row was the perfect way to end a few hours in this beautiful park and palace. I'm in Frederiksdal. This is an open air museum, and basically, you'd come here to see and to experience how life has been lived in Sweden throughout the centuries. We're going to go inside and meet our host, Charlotte, who's going to treat us to a traditional Swedish fika and to tell us stories about superstitions and how herbs played a role. Only a few minutes from Helsingborg's North Harbor, Fredriksdal allows you to see a variety of landscapes in South Sweden and to learn more about the region's kitchen gardens. And we have this basilica. Okay, so that's basil. How is that used? Yeah, well, you have the girl now. She, it's 1850, and she's so happy with this man, and she wants to keep him. Every day before he goes to the fields, she takes the basilica and she puts it in his clothes, and he will always come. And who say it might work even today? Charlotte and I continued our stroll. Fredriksdal is actually larger than Stockholm's well-known Skansen. It was a gorgeous September day and we found a lovely table along a path in the woods where we sat down for coffee and Swedish cinnamon buns called Kanabula. The Swedes call this tradition fika, and it's certainly something you'll want to experience it's basically taking time to appreciate life with others. Our next stop was the Old Town Quarters. Historic buildings were brought here from Helsingborg City Center for preservation. It's like a stroll along Nostalgia Lane. Could I ask, what is it you love about working at this place? Oh, wow, it's a lot of things. <laughs> it's, well, it's pretty all year round. The nature is fantastic and the culture is interesting. There's always some story you can tell. Yeah. And I keep learning new things. That's most important. Well, thanks, Charlotte, for showing well, me Fredrikstad. You. You're welcome yeah. back. Yeah, thank you. Okay. In the 1890s, tourists thronged to the Grand Hotel in Mula for a simple reason. Men and women could swim together on a common beach. Mola is the birthplace of Swedish sin. Our reason for coming here, though, was to experience Kula Bay, a nature reserve. Kula Bay is an outdoor playground with one of the best golf courses and with the best views in all of Sweden. The expansive peninsula, characterized by its rugged coast, offers trails for hiking and for mountain biking. Described as a compact New Zealand, Kula Bay also offers a variety of water sports, including the extremely popular 
Porpoise Safaris. From Kula Bay, we headed to the Beira Peninsula toward Bolstad, stopping at the charming fishing village and now a popular resort town, Turakov. We also stopped at Hulf's Halle, another nature reserve where the famous Swedish director Ingmar Bergman shot parts of his film The Seventh Sill. We had a fika at Flakorna Lundgren, where one of Sweden's former kings enjoyed the vanilla hearts cake, and so did we. And then we headed to a special farmhouse where an opera singer once lived. She once told an interviewer that she began to sing before she could walk. She grew up in this farmhouse in this beautiful countryside. And I'm talking about Birgit Nilsson, a farm girl who went on to become one of the world's most famous sopranos. This spot is now a museum and also her old home. Let's go inside to meet her niece and to learn more about this fascinating lady. Birgit Nilsson was a dramatic sopranist who performed operatic and symphonic works. Her voice was noted for its overwhelming force and its bountiful reserves of power. She was particularly gifted at hitting the high notes. So good to Birgit was capable of hitting such high notes that she sometimes broke things. Yes, she did. It's, there's a remarkable story about how she cracked the windows in a church in Sweden when she sang. <laughs> but it's not the only thing she cracked. Uh, once she sang in Tehran, and uh, she had bought some beautiful earrings. And at the concert that evening when she sang, she cracked one of them. And it was her voice that made it crack. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the farmhouse where Birgit Nilsson grew up and loved to return to all of her life is next door to the museum. We went inside to see it just as Birgit had left it when she died on Christmas Day in 2005 at the age of 87. Even if you've never heard of Birgit Nilsson, this is a place that you can appreciate. It's not often that you come to a museum where you can learn about a person's professional career and then walk next door to the farmhouse where they grew up. Birgit Nilsson was a simple farm girl who went on to international acclaim. But this is the place that she loved coming back to and spending time, and I know that you will too. Our next stop was Bostad, one of Sweden's most beautiful towns. With its iconic bathhouse at Hotel Skansen and its nearly always blue skies, Bostad is known for its gorgeous coastline, as well as the Swedish Open Tennis Tournament, attracting great players like Serena Williams since 1948. I walked the town's lovely streets to find another tradition that Bostad is known for, and that is weaving. Today I want to tell you about a remarkable woman. Her name was Matamos Fiatustrom, and she wanted her art to be appreciated on floors. I'm here in Bostad in one of Northern Europe's most important weaveries. Let's go see what it's all about. Works of art have been produced here since 1919. Today, the rugs and woven textiles are produced on specially built looms and all by hand using designs and instructions that have been passed down from generation to generation. It's part museum, part shop, with wonderful displays of color. In addition to the classical carpets, there are also contemporary carpets. This one on my right, for example, this is the audio waveforms of a trout transferred into the fabric of a carpet. And on my left, well, this is the audio waveforms of a satellite landing on a planet. There's a saying here that these carpets are not expensive, but they do cost a lot. Now, this particular design is owned by Steven Spielberg, and guess where he has it? On his bathroom floor. That would have made Marta Moss Fjernström very proud. From beautiful palaces and sprawling gardens, to nature reserves perfect for soft adventure, to open-air museums that present the best of Sweden's story traditions, and sites that celebrate her gifted performers and artists, Northwest Skåne has a lot to offer. And it's all easily accessible from one of the most charming towns in all of Sweden, Helsingborg, a beautiful seaside town just an hour from Copenhagen at the narrowest part of the strait that separates Sweden from Denmark. We've only been able to show you a little of all that you can do when you visit this region in the south of Sweden. 
Make sure that your next cruise ship visit calls on Helsingborg, Sweden. I'm Ralph Grizzle, and I'll see you next time.